Pratt for this dialogue. Thank you, Novo Nordisk. So, as Dr. Mangesh in his talk uh, began and said that we are in the, one of the best times to treat diabetes, as we know. Uh, we are offering a big choice of dish to people here, whichever they want to choose from. And that is what now Mithun and me are going to confuse you further and giving you one more dish to choose from, that which insulin to choose. So, first of all, can I have a raise of hands? How many are using premix more than basil here? When you prescribe a patient insulin, with your first insulin that you are prescribing, how many patients in our country or in your practice require premix as the first insulin? Few hands. No. Rest of all, I assume, are using still basil. Oh. Great. So, <clears throat> yes, it is a time where I am sure we are going to have more and more surprises as Sanjeev Bhai also just now raised the question of I, I could, I can, I just had a running thought in my mind that time is not far when maybe next year we are going to talk about this insulin and patients are going to uh, come and say, Atwadi ama divas kayo saro jakaya juse choose karu insulin devanu. I think that is one thing which we are going to also see. So I am going to begin this uh, with a case study of a 52 year old uh, female patient called Savita. Uh, she has a sedentary lifestyle, comes for consultation with complaints of tingling in the foot, frequent fatigue and lethargy, has challenges particularly to adhere to diet, uh, typically uh, non-adherent in terms of diet, is concerned about her busy lifestyle more and treatment regimens that would affect her day-to-day -day practice and so uh, does not want a treatment which would bound her uh, tightly to certain time schedules and uh, she uh, has a comes with the blood parameters of HbA1c of more than 9, 9.6, fasting and PP of 142, 168, uh, post lunch of 284 uh, with a slightly higher BMI of 26. Patient is already on three drugs, cetagliptin, metformin and empagliflozin. Has a history of a GLP-1 taken in the past but could not tolerate it well and so wants to refrain from using in the, such a molecule where she may have some gastric issues and typically says that I am worried about initiating an injectable therapy and more I am worried about the complications of uncontrolled diabetes and therefore uh, comes to us for a treatment approach. So <clears throat> my question to Mithun is how do we manage this case scenario? She is already on three drugs as we have seen whether your choice would be to add a fourth drug or you are thinking about insulin for such kind of patients. So thank you Tejas, thank you Batsipai for invitation. You see the best thing about a dialogue is that if you are doing it with a friend, so thoda upar niche chalta. If you are doing it with somebody else, it's very difficult. If you are doing it with a friend, thoda chalta. So now we have this scenario in which this patient is of three drugs coming, already saying, boss, I do insulin nahi chahiye. So first of all, don't do a hurried consultation with it. You know this is not going to be an easy fight with this. First, what I do with this patient is that I said I need to discuss with you, so thoda sa piche ke taraf. Last me when I can, I know that I am not going to get exhausted, she is not going to get exhausted. But importantly to ask her because you are going to, after three drugs, landmark trial has shown that adding a four drug is kind of irrelevant what are you doing. You are doing something as uh, Saab has said that private practice bacha rahe ho, do mahine, teen mahine ke liye ke patient kahi nahi jaye. Then eventually wo patient chhod ke chala jayega, bolo udhar panch drug diya, chhe drug diya, kuch nahi ho raha hai. Doctor bhi kaha rekhali bhi jada paisa leta hai, test leta hai, kuch kaha aani gaani hai. So at given point of time, you know this patient needs insulin. I think sometimes having a discussion with this patient is, is very important because insulin has its own stories. Uska nahi ka baap mar gaya kidney failure se because he had insulin or somebody had died, somebody had... So there is a lot of stigma that is carried and you have to accept that that stigma exists, be it right, be it wrong and find out the reason why he is having that fear but adding a fourth drug, if we add a fourth drug, it will not happen you know we talked about clinical illness here in, in the previous session Tejas, so I think we need to grab the bull by the horns and actually discuss why the patient does not want insulin and try to actually come to bring about insulin and discuss how we can do insulin in this case. I think giving another therapy may may not may not really do the desired result. 0.1, 0.2 HbA1c that might move anyway here and there. RSLDI guidelines also suggest that you know adding another doesn't really work. And most guidelines after you 
Reese had kind of said that, oh, you know that nothing else is going to happen and in Pune we really need to do that. So rightly Mithun, uh, as the data also tells us that when we add a fourth drug or a third drug to fourth drug, the change in HB even c is not more than 0.2 or 0.3. So this patient of ours is already at an average of 9 or more than 9 where we want to reduce it by more than 2% or nearly 2%. It makes sense to think about insulin rather than an OHS. So, do you think that we have to consider uh, in looking at the Indian scenarios? We always call ourselves different Indians. I'm Asian Indian phenotypes. Our diets are different. Do you think we should consider a particular insulin therapy when you are prescribing it to our population, or the golden rule of basal first works for everywhere? So, I think we are very different, boss. I mean, our mithai chahiye. You know, in lunchtime, everybody wants, and there is big carb load. In Assam, when I am there, people go to office, good rice content, 10 o'clock, come back, good rice content. They want their carb. We are a carb eating nation. We have to accept that. You know, we can fight. And I personally feel, with no hindrance to say, it's easier to change a religion in India than to change a food. It was very difficult. I have never eaten oats in my life. Abhi idhar oats kitani lag jaoge. Jab tak kidney ke kuch garbar hona, dus din, panna din khayenge, fir back to square, dheere dheere when you are eating. So we love our carbs. We have to accept that we need to address the carb that is there in our diet, and we need to bring about the insulin that will address that carb. So purely having a basal, it's a gora concept that pure basal de do and everything works because they don't eat. I've been there. You know, hardly you start for breakfast, you lunch and dinner, you have something solid, a little bit here, a little bit there. And that is why, that is their lifestyle, because they don't know how to cook, they don't have our food that is there, they have not seen life. They are deprived part of the world, we are an advanced part of the world, we have to accept that. So, carb is what we have. We can change gradually, but we cannot ask person to change from east to west gradually. So, we need to have... Uh, something because there is a every time there is a trickle of insulin all the time and whenever we have uh, food there is a spurt of sugar that is there because of the release of the food and I feel that prandial sugar whenever there is a rise of prandial sugar it goes and hits the end organ it slaps your eyes it slaps your kidneys it slaps your heart and see ek jaga bar bar thapad padega to move fulega na to kidney kharab hogi liver kharab hoga heart kharab hoga so we need to address that spikes of sugar we need to look at insulin that can address the spike of sugar uh, that is there is there but i think now tejas i also should ask you question you only ask any question that's not it karega so as i have said indians have high ppg control so do you think we should just grab and start ppg control from the straight away या थोड़ा धीरे थोड़ा पहले ये देखते हैं फिर वो देखते हैं फिर पीपीजी को एड्रेस करेंगे व्हाट इज इन योर व्यू वी शुड डू आई थिंक वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज इन एवरीवेयर हैव रिलाइड टू मच ऑन फास्ट ब्लड शुगर्स मोर और लेस इफ यू सी द डेटा एंड इफ यू सी व्हाट इज प्रैक्टिस इन यूएसए एंड एवरीवेयर दे रिलाई प्राइमरीली ऑन मोर ऑन फास्टिंग शुगर एंड एचबी एवेंसी बट ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम नॉलेज अबाउट पोस्ट प्रैंडियल लेवल्स एंड पोस्ट प्रैंडियल शुगर्स हैव हैज कम अप एवरीवेयर and what we now know is that it is important to target postprandial control also equally important because it is considered to be one of the marker and one of the risk factor for cardiovascular mortality also proved in various trials like decode etc now uh, traditionally uh, again it was always thought that if your hb1c is high more than 8 or 8.5 or 9 you target your fasting sugar first bring that sugar down and when your a1c comes down below 8 it is your postprandial component which plays a role more and then you control the postprandial but uh, well, again trials and studies done specifically in asian patients have shown us that you need to target both if you want to achieve that desired glycemic control of bringing down the a1c to less than 7 this is one of the study which was a this was a pooled analysis of 16 ra randomized control trials where they mainly looked at uh, their patients were put on a basal insulin their blood sugars were controlled their fasting blood sugar was attained to the desired target their and they compared asian patients versus non asian patients what they found out was that in spite of a good fasting sugar in both subset of patients the non the asian patients still could not achieve a good glycemic control and an a1c at the target while non asian patients could uh, reach that level which told us that it was important to target the ppg also and bring the ppg down and the ppg component in the asian subgroup of population always remained as slightly higher as compared to non asian so this tells us that it is important to target both fasting and postprandial if we want to desire reach the desired control and clearly 
this is like a cycle as what this figure also shows that you cannot you need to pedal it properly you need to target all the three components in order to reach the glycemic level and to prevent the complications and definitely ppt has a stronger correlation also important is that to look at the uh, what the views of the people are now this is an important survey called impact which was done across india it looked at uh, it took a questionnaire from physicians or more than 2000 physicians were uh, asked a questionnaire related to diabetes and their treatment methods and their preferred insulin and etc about this and what again it showed that almost 90% or 93% of the physicians here said that they would prefer a therapy which would control fasting and postprandial both from the very beginning rather than waiting for a fasting to come down first and then the ppg they would target more so in other words we know that we need to target our postprandial levels from the very beginning is what the message is so coming back to uh, mithun uh, what insulin would you consider in this kind of a patient that we are talking about now seeing that the parameters seeing the values that this patient has and the choice of insulin which is there in front of so i think first of all we have a patient who is not ready for insulin now we will convince this patient for insulin and he will have any excuse to come back and say i told you doctor i po hua to i told you doctor कुछ भी लफड़ा हुआ तो मैंने बोला था मेरे को नहीं लेने का आपने मुझे फोर्स किया तो व्हाट आई फाइंड इज दैट मेल मील इज ब्रेकफास्ट इट्स वेरी इजी फॉर मी देन राइजोटेक इज वेरी इजी बिकॉज नेक्स्ट टाइम दे विल डू फास्टिंग पीपी दोनों कम हो जाएगा दे विल बी हैप्पी सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ व्हेन दे कम बैक दे सींग अ बेटर रिजल्ट ऑन बोर्ड पैरामीटर सो देन दे आर लिटरली हैप्पी एंड यू गॉट देम ऑन देर साइड एंड लेटर यू मे वॉन्ट टू टाइटेड यू नो विद इंसुलिन रेजिमेंट विद सी जी एम एस बेस्ड ऑन दर नीड ऑन एथिंग but we need to predominantly have an insulin that as we have discussed to have a prandial component that is there that needs to be addressed and i think on this you know we've had a long talk on deglutec and bif biphasic insulin we are all aware of how biphasic insulin work you have to mix it shake it there is no there is no protamination of the aspart site and that needs to be addressed if mix insulin is very good if you have people who eat at regular times They eat the same amount of carbs, but most doctors don't. Most uh, entrepreneurs don't. Most people in today's 21st century do not, because they're running after something which they also don't know what they're running after. So it's a very busy life, and they're wanting to achieve the best they can. So flexibility is very important when it comes to that. So either a basal bolus, but in this patient, basal bolus so means you've lost the patient. He will walk out straight away. So you need to get something which is in tandem with today's time. and that is where itecast is very good now itecast file make it very simple all presumably most people in this audience are married can I have a show of hands who had an arranged marriage so in this era of people love marriage was why god you know now can i have a show of hands who have a love marriage in this so a few hands are coming now i'm not going to ask about live in relationship because no hands are going to come up but you see we need blessings of everybody the family the parents parents have to allow love love like uh, love relationship to happen and even with live in now what is this a live in and then let us know whether they are compatible or not so we have moved beyond time and this is how co formulation lives together in a live in relationship without disturbing the ecosystem with no strings attached to each other and that is why it's a good insulin to start because you have an ultra long acting deglutec with a rapid acting aspart that is there but the binding factor of this i i was not aware i asked the novo guys ye 7030 hi kyun and they had to i also had to read a lot why 7030 why didn't they make 8020 and i read a few papers i learned you think that the binding factor is always family so the binding factor here is the gene component depending on the gene gene component this 7030 is there is five zinc with six millimole of deglutec and two zinc with aspart that combination is keeping it in a unbinded state if you change the zinc combination they have a hybrid complex together and they will release at different time so you need the family blessings to live in live in relationship that is the take home message so zinc is the family approval that is there for a live in relationship and you need a bit of phenol as well so when they are released uh, the zinc is uh, the they are released as multi hexamazine slowly broken down 
And so the initial have their own path. So it's nice to start with in such a patient that we have that, uh, you know, probably, hopefully his breakfast is the main meal. And all of us, they do fasting PP. Even if they do, you tell them not to do, they will do. Even you give them a glucometer, they will do fasting PP, they will go to the lab. You can't change the ecosystem, the mindset. You have to play along with the ecosystem. You want the patient on your side for his betterment. So I think IDECAS is a prudent choice uh, to, for this patient that is there. So uh, a question to you, what does the evidence say when you have to consider co-formulation over basal insulin? Should we or should we not? So I think see when we are going to choose our insulin or offer an insulin to a patient, what are the prime parameters that we are looking at? First of all, why we choose insulin? Any insulin because it is efficacious. We know that the drop in HbA1c that will happen with insulin is on is way above any other OHS that we can use. There is no upper limit of a A1c drop that we can get with insulin. So first of all, any insulin has to be good in efficacy. Secondly, in today's times, we are looking a lot at safety. The risk of hypoglycemia, the fear of hypoglycemia has been so much in the minds of people. One episode of hypoglycemia in a patient's life pushes the patient back much to use insulin again. So we have to look at insulin where the chances of hypoglycemia per se are very, very less or very, very minimum. We are looking at quality of life. A person coming to you when you prescribe insulin and he comes back to you after a month, he should be able to tell you, okay, doctor, I'm really feeling better. I've not had many issues after starting insulin. This is comfortable to me. And overall, the quality of life has improved is what the answer should be by the patient. And fourthly, we are looking at flexibility. Flexibility in the sense that it doesn't, it, it has, should not be very rigid. In today's lifestyle, patients want to be more flexible in terms of timing of injection, timing of eating food, their lifestyle, their office work, etc. So an insulin which gives more flexibility in terms of the time and uh, dosage, that is where we are looking at. So this is a, uh, when we are comparing a co-formulation to a basal uh, insulin, one of the data that we have or what I'm showing here is a study where uh, it looked at comparing uh, IDA caps versus insulin glargine 100 and glargine 300. This was an Indian day, this is an Indian paper where they, pay, patients were given this insulin in different arms. The, the trial went on for 26 weeks. The change in fasting parameters, change in HbA1c, change in postprandial control. They looked at the hypoglycemia evidences here was assessed here. And clearly the, the change in HbA1c was marginally better in the IDACAS arm. The drop in HbA1c was overall superior at 15% as compared to 10% with uh, glargine 100. The drop in fasting blood sugars was again uh, non-significantly superior but definitely not inferior at 34 versus 32. The drop in postprandial sugars was significantly higher in the IDACAS arm versus glargine 100 and glargine 300 both. So clearly showing that it could achieve a similar glycemic control head to head without increased incidences of hypoglycemia. That what, what we are worried about, especially when you are using a premix kind of a uh, formulation. Secondly, this is another meta-analysis which uh, this is a meta-analysis which looked at various uh, figures. I think the numbers are not coming here. Some issue, but overall this was a meta-analysis which was done pooled analysis which looked at uh, patients where IDACAS was prescribed versus patients where they prescribe a premix uh, insulin as well as basal insulin. And again, all the data clearly showed that the HbA1c change when they compared IDACAS versus premix was again similar when they compared HbA1c change in IDACAS versus basal was similar. The change in fasting sugar was superior with IDACAS as compared to uh, premix. Uh, it was similar as compared to basal and the change in postprandial again was superior with IDACATS. But the difference was the nocturnal hypoglycemia were much lesser in the IDACATS arm. So the nighttime drop in sugar which sometimes happens and what we are fearing in patients when we are starting insulin for the first time again is found to be better in the IDACATS co-formulation as compared to any other insulin that has been tried. Overall, this was again a questionnaire which I spoke to you about where they are looking at the quality of life. When they compared patients at the end of 26 weeks where patients were switched over to IDACAS where the patients originally were taking glargine 100 and there was a, almost a significant improvement in the quality of life which was assessed by a questionnaire 
where the patients came back and told after 26 weeks that they did feel better in number of days. So the flexibility that it gives is that it can be used at any time of the day because of the longer half-life that the degludec component of IDEC app has. Uh, initiating it uh, is again important that you can give it within three hours before or after the usual injection time. That is important again because if the patient's normal taking uh, the time to take insulin is at night 10 p.m. and he somehow is outside, he cannot take it at 10. He can still take it at 11, 12 or he can still take it at 9 or 8 in the evening. And still the effect and the half-life, because of the half-life is such that the effect would more or less remain similar. And of course, you can administer it at any major time of the day. Most of the basal insulins we try to give only at night time after dinner is what the standard protocol is. Some patients we do give in the morning. But IDAC has, again, you can, irrespective of the whatever is convenient to the patient, you can start it at any time of the day with the major meal and it would still work in the same way for 24 hours. So it's just more or less a simple regimen to administer with any major meal of the day. You initiate with 10 units uh, and slowly uh, titrate, give the uh, titration chart to the patient and accordingly tell the patient to titrate or, or increase the dose in order to reach the desired effect. Again, switching from one insulin to other insulin is also something which is uh, an advantage of IDACAPS, which it gives over glargine and, and this is one of the data. Uh, which again tells us. So, Mithun, uh, last question I think to you. What are the practical aspects of co-administration with OADs when you are switching a patient, especially patient is already coming to you on a basal or premix or a basal bolus and you would think about shifting to IDACAS. What are the conditions you will think that I can shift this patient to IDACAS? Is there an advantage to it and how easy it is? So, it is not easy, so first of all. Because we are a creature of habit, I prescribe what I have learned from my bosses, you prescribe what your teachers have told you and the pen first starts writing. And then you must have a very good reason to change from there to another. It's like you are already married, now you need to have an affair, you need to have a very good reason to move. So you just can't move like that. So moving basal bolus is gold standard, moving from basal bolus, you need to have a very very good reason to move from basal bolus, sign with the riser deck top. I am a basal bolus person. Actually, have no patients on change. Either they are co formulation, basal or basal. I have zero patients on change because I have been taught that way. I have been modulated that way, and I find it very difficult to move to a premix because of that. But that is, as, is how you are, that there is nothing right, there is nothing wrong. But if you have to move from any insulin to any insulin, not risodec, dignodec, lantus, whatever, I understand that you sh they say one is to one ratio most. Data will show 1 is to 1. I am showing this slide out here with also show 1 is to 1. But I don't do 1 is to 1 in my practice. I do a 10% reduction because you are going to an unfamiliar territory. You don't know how that unfamiliar territory is going to behave. Once you've got the feel of the territory, you can always type it up. No, you can down. So, with, I do a 10% reduction when I am moving insulin to the total daily dose so that I get the feel of that insulin. Whether the patient is sensitive, not sensitive, you don't know what problems they might have, whether they maybe react, more react, more sensitive to that insulin. There are a lot of things which, which I think are out of the science permit which inside individual physiology determine. So this is what I do in my practice. Most people recommend one is to one movement of the total dose and you divide that into, if it's basal bolus total dose divided into two and give two I take us, if they're having two major things. So I think whatever you do, you need to type it. You might want one is to one, you might do a 10% reduction, you might want to raise by 10%, the sugar is not controlled, it doesn't matter. Most important thing is that you need to titrate that dose of insulin. You have embarked on a journey, you need to finish your silver jubilee and do a golden jubilee in your marriage. You cannot leave halfway your marriage. So when you started insulin, you need to give the maximum benefit of that insulin. You may want that patient might need one, you might want to do a CGMS to find whether they need another bolus somewhere, whichever way you might do 6.7 whatever you want to do, but you need to move forward to get the best, yeah, everything is one is to one, that's what people recommend, but what I do, I have said, I do a 10% reduction, and then I get the feel of that insulin, and I can always type it up as what they, they are there, as they've said, 10%. Uh, so I think, what they say, total daily dose, and you can divide that, but I think it's a very good insulin. Honestly, hand to heart, I was a strong critic of Rizal. When I came in, because I was a basal bolus doctor, I said, 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 I said
but this is one insulin which has changed my pen and I do my initiation with this purely because it's easier to convince my difficult patients when they see the standard form of the passion drop they are on my side and it's easier to work with those patients that are there I think I will give Mrs. Savita to you now once IDEC has been initiated so finally with all convincing uh, data and everything we did start the patient this patient can be started on IDEC as or started at uh, with a night dose of IDEC as basically continuing with the cetagliptin, empagliposin and metformin uh, patient did well started on uh, HbA1c of say 9.8 after 3 months of insulin therapy came down to 7.2 with a good fasting and postprandial control no significant episodes of hypoglycemia patients overall quality of life improved and overall symptomatically did was better with a much more flexible kind of regimen thank you so much so 